Do you know the difference between stress and burnout? I think that there are a lot of varying definitions kind of floating around the world, but I recently heard uh, more of a description that resonated with me. When you're stressed, it means you have so many things on your plate and it's getting increasingly heavier and heavier and heavier. It's difficult to figure out how to hold it all. And when you're overwhelmed, you it's almost like you've gone a little bit past stress and into a place of frozen. Like you're so drowning in all of it, you have no idea where to go next. It's gotten so heavy that you can't move at all. So what does this have to do with creativity? Have you ever stared down at a blank page, completely frozen, no idea what to do? All you know is that picking up your paintbrush just feels so heavy. Stress and overwhelm might have to do with this. So if you're feeling really, in my, my kind of translating this into painting is if you're feeling really stressed about a painting, it could be because you're focusing on all of the things, right? You feel like you are being weighed down by all of the expectation, by all of the fear, by all of the whatever it is that you don't know, okay? And if you're feeling overwhelmed, which the two often go together, it could be that the stress is so much that you just have no idea where to start. So I am primarily a landscape painter and I know how intimidating painting landscapes can feel. That's why I thought that this exercise for this particular topic would be so great. Because look, the reality is you don't have to paint it all. You don't have to paint like anybody else. You don't even have to paint like the way that you imagine you want to in the future. You can just put paint onto paper in easy, simple strokes, just color, just lines, that's all. And it can be so much fun and bring you so much joy. So throughout the rest of the lesson, we are going to do just that. We're going to pick out some reference photos and then we're going to paint landscapes really messy, really sloppy, really simple. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to pick out a couple, maybe two or three landscapes that seem like we might be able to simplify them. So for the first one, we definitely wanna go very simple. And this is one that immediately caught my eye because there are some really pretty colors, but they're all fairly separate. And so it's going to be pretty easy to create a color block abstract landscape when the colors are kind of separate, right? It's a fairly simple composition. There are not tons of subjects going on really other than the sky and the ocean, we just see these like dark silhouetted houses and you know, the moon. And so there are lots of ways that we could go about this, but what are we practicing this week? We are practicing simplifying. We are practicing kind of deconstructing overwhelm and deconstructing stress, right? We don't need all of these little details. We don't need all of like, we don't even need the moon necessarily. We don't need the lights. We don't need the clouds. We're just focusing on color and on very basic shapes. So uh, that is, you know, to, to kind of combat stress, we need to figure out and prioritize what we don't need, right? Because stress is when you're, it's stress is when you have too much on your plate, when things are, when it's too busy too much to handle. So the way to alleviate stress, especially when you're painting and you're choosing from a reference photo even, is to figure out, okay, what don't I need? Don't need the moon, don't need the, like maybe I keep some of the cloud lines, but not necessary. Don't need the little dots for the lights because I'm not even trying to paint houses, right? I'm really just trying to paint lines of color. So very, that's the first step. And then the second step to overcome overwhelm, right? Because stress is when you have too many things to focus on. Overwhelm is where you don't know where to start. The first place to start is to figure out our color palette. And that's actually where drawing from a reference photo for really simple abstract landscapes is can be really helpful because then you're not sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know what a good color palette is. <laughs> I just... 
I know what I like when I see it, but I'm not sure if I can come up with it entirely on my own. And that is okay. You can lean on resources like this and it is still exercising your creativity. So I was drawn to this one because it has a really beautiful color palette. So my next step then is I'm going to uh, kind of set this up over here. So it might not be super in the shot anymore, but that's okay. I'm gonna set it up right over here so that I can see it. Ooh, I lost it for a minute, that's okay. I'm just gonna find it. You can still kind of see it. Um, da -da -da -da. Here we are, okay. So I'm gonna set it up so that I can, I can see it on my iPad. And I'm gonna open up my sketchbook and turn to a new page. I think I'm gonna do a spread because I want, I'm gonna do two of these landscapes and I want them to be next to each other. So I'm gonna have it be like at the top of the page is where I'm gonna test out and try to mix the colors I wanna use. And then the bottom of the page is going to be the actual abstract landscape. Okay, so I am using my case for making paints this time, uh, especially when you're doing quick exercises like this to just, you know, get your creativity going. It's one of my favorite times to use handmade paints because I just feel really extra special using them uh, because I know that somebody else made them especially for me. So let's start from the top and go to the bottom. The top is this really beautiful kind of dusky blue. And so let's see if this, this blue is gonna kind of capture it. I think that blue is a little too gray and that's okay. So then what I'm gonna do is over here, mm, I'm gonna use a, this palette. Um, I'm just gonna kind of put some of that blue on here and then add a little bit of a, you know, a blue or blue, <laughs> so to speak, to it so I can kind of get a mix. And by the way, I'm not trying to get a perfect mix here. I'm not trying to like match these shades exactly. I'm just trying to have fun mixing my colors and getting to a place that feels like, oh uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so yeah, that one looks pretty good. So. Uh, especially since we're kind of starting from the top and then going down, I can even mix my color and then mix a lot of it and paint that. Hmm, do I want to do that? I don't know. So the downside of painting, like doing the mix and then doing the landscape is that we might not necessarily get those really cool blends uh, when the lines, when we start painting the lines, which you'll see what I mean when we start painting them. So, so maybe I'm just going to do some of the mixes first and then then I will get to, I'll do all the mixes and then I'll do the painting. <laughs> Sorry to trail off there. Okay, so this is kind of like the blue that I'm going for. And next we have, we could do just like a little thin line of purple where these clouds are. That could be kind of fun. So let's see if I have, I think if I do, this is kind of like a really pale lavender purple. If I do that and then I mix it with maybe a little bit of this pink over here. See, this is really fun because I, again, I'm not trying to get anything to be exact. I'm just randomly mixing things together to get to a color that I like. So, okay, that seems like the purple I'm looking for. Yes, that will do, that will do nicely. So, and then we have I am trying to, remember, not do more than I need to. So I'm just gonna do these three colors in the sky. And actually this works well, blending this kind of like peachy color in with the blue I have on my palette because it makes the peach just a little bit muted, which is what I want. So, okay, that's gonna work. So as you are doing this yourself, you don't need to do all the mixes that I'm doing. You can just pick colors and go for it. To just say, okay, pink, purple, I mean, I mean, blue, purple, pink, and then go for it. So now I'm going to paint the sky and then I'll get to mixing the other colors down below. So for the sky, I'm going for really simple, right? I'm not even trying to paint. I'm not, I don't even necessarily want this to look like a landscape, just to be clear. Like this can just look really abstract and that will be fine. 
that is just fine. If if people look at this and don't automatically think, oh, that's a landscape, I don't need them to know that it's a landscape. I'm doing this for me, right? I'm painting this exactly for me. So I'm just doing a block of blue right toward the top. I'm gonna leave maybe a little sliver for where the purple is gonna come in. So there's that kind of simple block of blue. And then this kind of like dusky lavender purple for the clouds. I'm just going in and out, not even trying to make clouds, just adding the color. That's it. And then the last thing is this kind of peach color. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of it because I need this bottom part <laughs> for the other things that I'm doing, but that's okay. Uh, so now I'm gonna look to see, maybe I'm gonna add a little peach to that, do some zigzags. You know, this is the part where you can have fun. You can just experiment because this whole, the whole concept of these exercises is to experiment, right? Is to play, to simplify. And by simplifying, by simplifying and by deciding what you're going to do first, it leaves you so much room for experimenting and exploring. And so maybe I'm even going to like mix these colors together and just kind of see what happens when I, you know, mix them right in there. Looks pretty cool. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is paint the silhouette. And that one doesn't have to be super complicated. I, I want to get a really dark kind of purpley blue and this color will do nicely. So I'm going to kind of go in and up into the sky, just like that. And maybe I want it a little darker. I feel like there's another color over here that might also work for this. I'm not actually sure what this color is, but we're just gonna paint right on top of it because we're experimenting, so. Cool, okay, I'm good with that. It's kind of like a dark purple indigo and that works for me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually for the bottom part of the ocean, I'm going to use my wet brush and just kind of gently brush underneath that silhouette. And then I'm going to take the blue that I already mixed over here and paint a few lines like that. So it's really subtle. And then I'm going to, the peach is gone, so I'm gonna add a little more. Add a little bit of this peach color right down here. And there you go, I'm done. So simple. Um, so here's that very first simple landscape. Um, we didn't really have many mixes, that's okay. Uh, there's lots of white space up here. Another way you could do this is, uh, you know, to try to make them, to try to go really fast. So maybe in the next minute, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna, instead of trying to get all of these mixes together, I'm gonna try to paint these a little bit choppy, like just going really fast and get them very pigmented not really paying attention if it's right or wrong, just kind of going for it, is another really fun way to kind of get out of your head and into the paper, because the point is not to create a masterpiece. The whole idea is simply to put brush to paper so that we can get out of our head and onto the paper. And then I'm gonna do this color. Yeah, cool. Okay, that one was fast and I really, really liked that one actually. Um, both of these are fun. This one was a little more intentional and slow. I mixed them on my palette and so it has more water. And then this one was just kind of fast and choppy and that one was really fun. I actually think that for the next one, I'm gonna do just this version and yeah, that will be fun. So next thing is to choose a, another photo. 
And I, before I started this video, I had one picked out already. So we're going to paint this kind of desert scene. And the reason I chose this scene is because it has these fun horizontal, um, you know, stripes. There's a lot, there's a little bit more detail in this one, but um, there's also, which also leaves us room to practice deconstructing, right? To practice eliminating what we don't need. But then we also have these vertical um, rock formations to kind of play with in terms of abstract color blocking. So that will be, I think this one's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and this time, because I wanna do these kind of quick blocks like I did before, I am, I'm not gonna do a ton of color mixing. And so that means the colors are not going to be exact and that will be just fine. So I do want to get an approximate, yep, that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna want kind of like a pale, this is like pale purple, but blue could also work for that. Pale blue for the top. And then maybe like some kind of, I don't know if this red violet's really going to work. It's not quite what I want. So maybe this one is going to be a little better. Again, these are just approximations, so it's gonna be okay. Um, definitely this like striking peach color. It's not exactly realistic, but we're not going for realistic here, right? We're letting go of the need to have everything be perfect. Maybe this orange can come into play a little bit too. And then definitely some of these more earthy colors for the desert part. And then maybe this darker green. Yeah, I think that will be good. Okay, this is gonna be fun. So I'm just gonna do it very fast because if I think about it too much, <laughs> if I think about it too much, then I'm gonna get too in my head. And the point is to get out of my head and onto the paper, right? We started with the colors and now we're going to do the quick strokes from bottom to top and that's how we eliminate overwhelm, right? As we pick a place to start. So I'm just gonna do a quick stroke of this light color. It's not exact, but it works. And then um, I am going to grab, what is the blue that I use? This one. This is for these little clouds off to the side. That works. And then we're going to do a little bit of purple, which did I use that one? I don't remember. I wasn't gonna do mixes, but I changed my mind, which you're also allowed to do. So I'm gonna do just like little line of purple down here, just along the horizon. And then I think I'm going to fill in the gaps here and then just do a splash of this kind of pink. I didn't do this one, but I think it's gonna be fun. Okay, these are just lines. We're really just scribbling, right? I'm not really, I'm not painting. I mean, I am painting, but I really am just scribbling. So I'm gonna do the vertical things last. Um, and so next, what I'm going to do is just kind of paint in loose kind of like zigzags with this red deserty color. And then maybe to kind of offset that, I'm also gonna do kind of a softer, but also earthy brown color. And I'm just doing choppy zigzags all the way. And then with this green that we chose, just gonna kind of dot this green here and there. If we want it to be realistic, then these should be smaller in the background, but we're not really shooting for realistic necessarily, right? So we don't even need to necessarily need them to be dots. I can decide, no, I'm gonna have them be strokes like I did before, because otherwise I'm gonna get too much, too much in my head, and that is not what I want. Not to be in my head. I actually really like what's going on here. <laughs> this looks pretty fun. Okay, and then the last thing is we're going to do these structures, just not thinking too much about them. Just painting these vertical rock formations, just like that. 
And then I'm going to add one last, some of this orange kind of in here, just to give it a little bit of more fun and depth. And I could actually, and I think I will do it, just because this is also about getting out of your head and just doing things because you want to. I'm gonna take some of this kind of like violet color and make some shadows in there. Hmm, <laughs> don't love it, but that's okay. The point is not to love it, the point is just to try and experiment. And there we go, all done. So I think that, you know, hopefully as we kind of painted these really loose, blocky, abstract landscapes, you remember if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, which is when you don't know where to start, or you're feeling stressed, which is when you have just too many things to focus on and not enough capacity to hold them all, just simplify. Remember, you don't have to do it all. You really don't. Especially in your creative pursuits, you can choose to eliminate pretty much anything and just gravitate toward color or just gravitate toward shape or whatever you want. And that can make exercises like this and it can make expanding your creative skills easier. But honestly, I'm less concerned about your creative skill and I'm more concerned about how much fun you're having. So this was just a lot of fun, making fun expressive strokes like this. And I hope that you had fun too. I will see you next time.